Welcome to another Big Jiminy video. This time we're going to look at changing the disc brakes on a Gen 3 over to vented discs. Those of you who've seen some of my other videos might have seen the one I've just done on the Gen 4 Jiminy, uh, talking about uh, the brakes and modifications that put on weight onto the car and therefore strain on the brakes. And you'd have seen me in that little video showing you can fit vented discs to one of these Gen 4s. Of course, I said in there that I wasn't actually going to fit them to our Gen 4 because it's not that modified. Instead, I'm going to fit them to my Gen 3. Um, as you can see, the Gen 3 meets all the criteria that I say in my previous video about overweight. Um, we've got these humongous tyres on it, uh, so the rotating mass of the wheels is uh, quite incredible. I've got uh, metal bumpers and a roll cage all round with a great big winch in it. I've got bash plates under the front. I've got uh, rock sliders on the sills. This is not a light car. In fact, it is overweight, um, but uh, it's a car that we've built up and loved. Would I do it again? No, I'd do something a lot lighter, but this is what we've got. So the aim here is to upgrade the disc brakes to the vented ones, as I said, so that we can at least get some of the braking back because the braking on this one is truly awful. It does pass the MOT, meets the MOT criteria, but my criteria on the road are is much higher than the MOT's one and I think the brakes are, are really bad. So let's get on and fit some vented discs to it. First thing you need is some parts. Uh, this wouldn't be a Big Jimny video, really, if I didn't uh, advertise some of the parts that are available in the Big Jimny store. None of the existing uh, Jimny brake parts on the Gen 3, well, on my Gen 3, are reusable uh, in the new configuration, so everything has to be new. So we have a new caliper, uh, which is wide enough to take the vented disc. Uh, as mentioned in my previous video, uh, the piston on this one is about 12% bigger than the standard piston, so it's going to give us uh, some, the capability of some good extra push on there. You need a caliper mount uh, to position the caliper correctly uh, and also to take the extra width of the, uh, the new disc brake and to space it correctly off of the uh, uh, car. I sell these uh, in the store. These are quite hard to get hold of. Um, most people uh, seem to try and look for them in scrap yards. Uh, but as you can see, I can get uh, refurbished ones that are definitely the correct ones to save you rummaging about and getting the wrong ones from a scrap yard. These are the correct ones and available through the store. Obviously new discs and uh, new calipers need new pads. These are a slightly different design than the standard Jimny ones. Again, I've measured them and they're about 10% bigger surface area, so additional braking. Caliper um, mounting kit, the sliders and the rubber seals and some grease, uh, plus a few bolts that come with the caliper to bolt that on, and a vented disc. These are available in two sizes, 107 and 108.3. You've got to make sure you get the correct one for your car. And if you are trying to build them and put yourself out of parts, you've also got to get the correct depth on them here. So again, if you buy them from the store, um, we have managed to work out the correct ones. Just remind me that the calipers are handed. This one is R. So um, you need to make sure that you buy a, a left hand one and a right hand one when you're doing uh, the car for both sides. So that's the kit. Let's look at fitting it. Fitting is pretty straightforward. All we need to do is unbolt the existing uh, caliper system and bolt on the new one. The most uh, time consuming part will be just removing the pipe and, the, uh, and bleeding the brakes. Uh, so this is a simple uh, unbolting job. What I will do is I'll leave this um, brake pipe on to the last minute uh, to avoid uh, leaking brake fluid everywhere. So the first thing I do is quite simply unbolt it by removing the whole caliper assembly itself.
that just lifts off and we will pop it away safely over there uh, to see in a minute. Um, now your disc, I mean obviously mine, mine have been maintained regularly and um, have not corroded on. If your discs have corroded on then there is a small hole, and that has two holes, one either side that will take a bolt, you wind the bolt in and that will push it off and break the rust seal so that it comes off. And that is the old disc and the brakes removed. So that's the old brakes removed. So now we put together the new one by putting the um, disc on. I find it's quite useful just to hold the disc in place with a couple of the wheel nuts to stop it moving around too far whilst you're trying to play with it all. And then we can slip the caliper on into place. And then we fit the pads. Um, these particular ones come with an anti-squeal kind of um, springy thing there. Um, So now we're going to we're going to fit the caliper using the caliper uh, kit. Comes with its own grease. Uh, it's important to use the right grease and not a not an oil-based grease because if you use an oil-based grease, then these uh, swell and jam the sliders. And these particular uh, calipers do have a reputation of being a little bit sticky anyway so you want to give them the best chance possible so a little bit of uh, grease on them from the kit as you can see this is a silicone based grease rather than a oil based grease and then spin them on into position like so and the same the other side we we'll now pop the uh, caliper itself on as I say make sure that it's the correct side this, this is the right hand side you may also find that because these pads are all thick and brand new that you need to push that piston in slightly um, when you buy it so I use a G-clamp just to squeeze the piston in a little bit. That slides on there. So I've not done these up fully tight. The reason being is that the bleed nipple for this uh, caliper is um, not at the top of, this is where the, the, the piston sits, is not at the top. So if you can imagine it, there's going to be an air gap in there. So when we come to bleed these, we're going to have to, it'll be like that. In fact, it'll be the other way around. We need to rotate it slightly. So by undoing one of these bolts, just to get the bleed nipple up at the top. A uh, bit of a pain. Um, I haven't ever worked on uh, the original car these came from. I, my guess is, is that they're probably mounted uh, slightly off the top so that this is angled up uh, naturally. But when you put them on a Jimny, it's not quite the same. After lots of messing around, the correct clips eventually turned up. Here they are fitted into the caliper and the pads. As you can see, the clips have to be extra wide to fit over the vented disc 
and no matter how many parts suppliers I did try and find in Europe, uh, none of them sent the correct ones. They all sent the narrow standard ones rather than the wider vented ones. Anyway, finally got there. With the caliper on, we're now going to remove the banjo bolt from there and put it onto here. When we do that, obviously the brake fluid is going to leak out. So the way I do that is to uh, put cling film over the master cylinder at the top, put the cap back on, as you can see here. With that done, we can now undo this bolt. Remove the cap, first of all, from where it's going to go so that we can move it across nice and quickly. We are going to lose some brake fluid, so got that to drain it in there. Now we have to repeat it for the other side and then we can bleed the brakes. With the caliper reassembled it's now just a matter of bleeding the brakes through. Uh, one thing you didn't see me do was uh, of course because we've undone the banjo bolts there from the original install um, the uh, washers need changing, the crush washers. Uh, you can buy them sort of from uh, Amazon for about two, uh, five pound for two, uh, especially branded as Jimny ones. Alternatively, for seven pound, you can buy a box of 200 washers, which is a, what I did to get some nice fresh washers in there to seal that. So now it's a matter of opening and closing the uh, bleed nipple and uh, bleeding out the uh, brake system. If you remember at the beginning, I mentioned that the bleed nipple was at an angle because this caliper doesn't mount vertically in the original vehicle that it's for. So I will obviously have to tilt it back this way uh, just to bleed the last bit out. So on with the bleeding. Press, release, press, release, press, release. I hope that you found that useful if you did you can press like and subscribe and get future updates from my video channel as i publish them so until the next video thank you very much